Here we go, guys. New banners are going up. It's freaking hot out here. It's like the summertime again. We're having record, record highs in the heat for this time of year. But as of yesterday, October 26th, we had some pompano start showing up in Perdido. And we are, I think like maybe two weeks out, right at two weeks. So great sign. I mean, they're already around Destin area, um, Panama City, Navarre, Pensacola. So with the tournament being so spread out as far as boundaries, like you can find some pompano. I always want them to be around Perdido for that Sunday. Sunday is the weigh-in day. Everybody's got to be here at Warrior Beer Company by 2 o'clock with your fish. So it makes sense to fish Perdido that morning. So it looks like we're going to have some fish here, guys. So a lot of people were asking me why I took the tournament, the fall tournament, out of October this year which is a legitimate ask because every year leading up until now, we have held the fall in October. A lot of it had to do with tides and how things played out last year. Last year we had a bit of a late run and not a lot of pompano were being caught. A lot of permit were being caught. We had like a record permit year in the panhandle but not a lot of pompano. So looking at tide charts and everything, full moons, even neat tides that we have going on this month and next, I scheduled around that. The reason I didn't do it the first weekend in November is because it looks like we have a bit of a neat tide that weekend. We want some movement out there, guys. So I pushed it off. And I'm glad I did because we are still like in summer temperature. Last time I checked, the water temp was at 75 degrees. And that was before all this heat kicked in. I'm going to lay these guys out. It's going to be easier. So I believe the timing was right, y'all. Now, what kind of conditions are we going to have that weekend? Who knows? But I know we're going to have some movement and our water temp should be cooler by then. And I believe that's actually a holiday weekend, which wasn't planned, but just kind of worked out because I think a lot of people have a three-day weekend. I never look at holidays when I'm scheduling those things out. Maybe I should start. These things are a pain in the butt. So, to answer the question and I keep getting asked about why I didn't do it in October that's why guys I didn't like to look at the tides and I'm trying to go off what was being caught last year this is gonna be a good one guys as of now I don't have any idea how many people registered so far because Madi's keeping up with all that I just know that my email is constantly pinging with angler registration. I would love to see a record tournament, like 200. We've never hit 200, and that's not a complaint by any means. I mean, to get even 100 anglers in like a relatively small tournament like this is amazing. And I mean, we do, I mean, I don't wanna say we don't do a lot of advertising. We advertise a lot, but just within, right? We don't use, fishing chaos or anything like that not that that's a you know not a good idea those guys are absolutely great and it would probably expand the tournament a lot i've just really never felt the need to do it and then you gotta you know you're gonna pay a percentage and all that which is fine you know if this tournament ever got to the point where like i don't think that Marty and i could handle it anymore then I look into something like that. And really guys, I like the aspect of having like that kind of personal touch. Like when you guys have questions and stuff like that, you're reaching out to me. 
I can answer them better than like a third party would be able to. Running tournaments, guys, especially when you have cash payouts and all that, it gets touchy. People don't want to feel like they're being cheated or there's a way to for them to lose because of dishonesty and things like that. So that's another reason I kind of keep everything in-house. Because really, if I if I pawned it off to a third party, my eyes wouldn't be on it as much. You know, I'm like, okay, well, I'm paying these people. They got it. I don't have to monitor this anymore. And yeah, like things could things could slip through the cracks. Bringing back the whiting division. We hadn't had a whiting division, I think, since maybe the first first tournament. Maybe the second. We carried it into the second. You know, I'm starting to enlist more help at the weigh-ins too. We've had Demo and Smitty help out the last few tournaments. With this one, I got Micah from Bass Pro Destin and Rick, our weekend warrior guide at Panhandle Salt. Those two are gonna be doing uh, the weigh-in of the fish this tournament. So getting more and more people to help, Donnie always offers to help, you know, so I have that extra support if needed. So bringing in like another fish, another whiting, it's not that big of a deal, but like when I was doing it by myself or like when me and Clint were doing it, like, you know, we were, we were doing aggregates at the beginning. So you had all these fish that were weighing like whiting, pompano, three at a time, one at a time. There's always the guy who doesn't know like which one's bigger. So he wants you to weigh all 18 fish. It just got to be too much. And then we were seeing also like at the end of the weigh in, there was a lot of like, do you want these fish going around, right? So the guys that were bringing in a lot of fish to weigh to try to try to win the aggregate, they didn't even necessarily want the fish. So I just saw a lot of waste going on. We definitely didn't anticipate the, the tournaments being that big as far as registered angler in the beginning either. <laughs> like we were, we were hoping for 50. And I think those first couple tournaments, we had like 180, 190 people. So you got 190 anglers all bringing in three fish to try to win that aggregate. Yeah, there was a lot of fish and a lot of waste going on, guys. In every tournament I hear about, uh, I need to put in multiple, multiple weigh-in stations and all that. Like, I do all that for a reason, guys. It's not just something that, like, I didn't put any thought into. And I was like, we're just gonna do one way in Perdido and that's it. Like I thought about all those options. I talked to tackle shops in the beginning about that. But what happens with all that stuff, guys, is there's room for error. So if I have three different way in spots, now I got three different scales. You can buy the same model scale and get it regulated the same and calibrated the same and all that, but it's still, could cause question so we want everything in the same place on the same scale on weigh-in day and that way come on and that way let's say the, the scale gets dropped and now the calibrations off well it's off for everyone not we got a drop scale here in Destin and to and two operating scales spread out somewhere else, somebody's gonna say something. As fun and as, as lighthearted as we try to make it, it's for a good cause. People still get a little weird when it comes to competition. I mean, we had guys in the spring tournament actually dumping out the raffle ticket bucket because they didn't win because they felt like maybe we didn't put their ticket in the in the bucket and you're talking about a two dollar raffle ticket guys they were dumping the bucket out and culling through it trying to find their ticket so yeah people get weird so we try to make this as fair as possible operation tackle box here is joining for the first tournament they are based out of Georgia, but are opening up a Perdido Key chapter. The founder is actually moving here. 
it's an organization that works strictly with combat veterans with PTSD and helping these men and women heal through fishing, which I feel is outstanding. The old tournament banner. This one doesn't have any dates on it. This would be cool to hang up somewhere. It might hang up in the shop. I have to measure it. These are awesome banners. Very good quality. Obviously, Madi works her magic. Gets these guys printed correctly. Gets everything lined up to make them look good. Yep, guys, I think we are gonna be in the Pompano hot and heavy come tournament weekend. I thought the run had started before the hurricanes because I was catching Pompano on a pretty regular basis. I mean, every trip, not a lot, but two, three a trip. The hurricanes hit and they just stopped. Whew, it is hot. And the weigh-in is a great chance, guys, to get some gear, especially the bigger stuff, because you'll save a ton of money on shipping. Benjamin Beach Wheels will be here, guys, so if you're looking to get those upgraded wheels for the cart, any kind of accessories, things like that, the weigh-in would be the time. I'm not sure if Deerfield's going to make it or not. He's at a pretty big tournament right now. So I don't know if he's gonna be able to swing both. Got that one too loose. Sorry about that, Larry. Get you fixed up there, buddy. I ran out of my big zip ties. So I'm down to these little guys. They're not working correctly for me. And these little things are harder to manipulate. So tiny. I don't even know if those are gonna hold. And Brian Arnold and the crew from Bird of Prey will be here, so. All your starboard stuff, like the, the rig boards, the cutting boards, the tailgate cutting boards, all that good stuff. You can get with Brian during the tournament. Get that stuff, because I'm sure that stuff is expensive to ship also. Then we have Sunbird Trading Co. here, new sponsor to the tournament. They're doing all custom apparel and stuff like that. Yep, they did this hat. They're doing all our clothing. So if you have a brand, that you're looking to get stuff printed, talk to Ricky. And then my buddy Charles, Surf Pro Tackle, and his family will be here. They have absolutely exploded since the April tournament. Charles sponsored one of our events a few years back. It was under a different name, um, Wild and Wonderful Great Outdoors, I believe was the name. He was doing some rigs, he had some little juice that he was putting on the rigs like an attractant. It was a great idea. It was effective. I fished it. But I think the concept was like a little too much. It was a little too much to deal with like out there in the surf. People were interested. Then it was like, you know, they forgot their bottle of juice at the house. Their bottle of juice spilt, whatever. So Charles just revamped everything. Came out with the float hooks, which have been wildly successful and effective. It's one thing to have a cool concept, but if it doesn't work, then you're kind of out of luck. But he had a cool concept and they catch fish. Just like at the house. <sighs> Marty giving me a hard time. Uh, my God, Marty. And I don't know this, Charles hadn't said anything to me or anything, but he could have some new product there. So I'm saying all that to say this, you know, fish or not, you should pop into the weigh-in just for the party, picky some stuff up, show some support to the sponsors, because without them guys, this would be a very bleak tournament. <laughs> I'm not putting up all that money to give you guys. I mean, in most of these guys, like, I'll use Redfin for example, our headliner. Redfin's putting up just as much in product as he is in cash. I mean, these guys put up a lot for you guys to show up and show out 
you know, and they understand the more anglers that register, the more money goes to these charitable donations, the more eyes get on their products. You know, it's a, it's a business move. It's a business move. I'm gonna have to make this one straight. She's gonna yell at me. It's a business move. It's a business move and it also helps out some less fortunate people. We're gonna have Sarah and her family here. Cameraman Ron's family. November marks a year when he passed away. And maybe this could be the start of something with the, the cameraman Ron thing. Maybe I'll start trying to find a, a local family that's been impacted in some way negatively. And maybe we can start doing that each tournament, like giving to obviously the, the bigger organizations and then having a family that's going through a hard time in and around Perdido that we can create another division for, like the cameraman Ron, we have the whiting thing going on. You know, we could play with it. Could be redfish, could be ladyfish, really whatever we want to do. And that way, we can spread out the love a little bit. I'm getting good at this. First couple times I did this, it was horrific. You don't tighten them. That's what I've learned. Just kind of get them on there. Then you secure them later. That way you can adjust if needed. And I give, I give Tony, Tony Faggioni Fish Gum full credit for that cameraman Ron division. That was his idea. He approached me with that last tournament. And really he was wanting to create like an entire tournament for Ron. And we and we toyed around with that idea. But it was just like adding another tournament in with so many other tournaments going on. Like we didn't want to clutter things up. So we came up with this idea. And of course I reached out to, to Sarah and her family, Ron's family, you know, and let them know what we were thinking, you know, their thoughts, if they had any problem with it. They had a few requests, which we were happily able to meet. I didn't know Ron well, but Ron gave me the time of day when nobody else would. He actually met with me for lunch one day when I first started this whole thing and let me yap and ask questions for two hours about YouTube and things like that because I had no idea what to do. I still don't. And at the end of the two hours, he wouldn't even let me buy him lunch. You know, that's what kind of guy Ron was. And I'm not the only one he's done that for. So although I wasn't like everyday buddies with Ron or anything like that, and I don't claim to be, I do appreciate what he did for me. The entertainment that he brought to the community where everything is so serious. Gotta catch big fish, big fish. Ron's like, I'm gonna go catch some whiting. All right, guys. What do you think? Looks pretty good. So obviously we have a lot more sponsors than the banners, but there's certain tiers that these sponsors take and going from tier one, which would be in the headliner, which is Redfin, down to tier three, what comes with that sponsorship is a banner that's gonna hang out here on this extremely busy road this is the main artery to the beach coming off the interstate. Anybody visiting the area, locals that are going to the beach, they are coming down this road. So they will see all our sponsors for at least a month. We advertise for 30 days, but I think the last banner set out here for four months. <laughs> so these guys are getting a lot of advertising. Looks good, Blaine. Already on. First rod out. A little whiting. Take him. That's my bait. I think we got a lot of mullet. Seen a lot of activity up close. 
schools and schools of something. There was a lot of mullet back in the bay late last week. I think that's what it is. It'll start bringing a net. I could get a lot of bait, I think, in one throw. Look at it all right here in front of me. I don't know if you can see it yet. Oh, big hit. <sighs> Trying to get my other camera set up. There he is. Come on, buddy. There we go. Got a little whiting. Here comes Durf. What's up, Durf? He abandoned his other buddy down there. It's not nice, sir. Go ahead and get him back. We got one. If I start catching some bigger ones, I'll start keeping them. We'll eat some whiting tonight. I want to get some pompano rods out. All right, guys, we got all the banners up. We are getting close to go time. We're two weeks out. And this is when things get crunchy. We have a lot of anglers, especially locals, that kind of wait to the last minute to register. They're waiting on weather and things like that. So usually that last three, four days before cast off, we get pounded. Get pounded with angler registrations, questions. Everybody starts asking questions right there at the end. I've done this enough that I know that that's what happens every, every tournament. Got that one right in front of the bar. Got more movement out here than I was expecting. Got a real low northeast wind. But the tide is falling. So it's creating some movement. All right, this one's bouncing around a little bit. Come on. I need two. I need two keeper pumps today. That's a bigger whiting. All right. I might start keeping these guys. I didn't see a lot of pompano being caught over the weekend, but there was definitely some pompano being caught which is better than it has been on this end. They've been getting them in Navarre and Pensacola for about a week, maybe longer now. But Perdido has been pretty quiet. But I had some of my customers checking in with me over the weekend, let me know what was going on. And we have had action. I saw both of these kind of bounce a bit. I believe my bait's gone. I don't have any fish gum with me. Left it in the fridge. I'm keeping them close because that's where I see all the bait. I'm just fishing three rods right now because I'm just investigating this spot. Give it a few more minutes here. If nothing, I'm gonna pack up and hit the next spot. Kind of keep doing that until I find a good one. It's a lot easier to pick up and move. You just got three rods out instead of like five or six. And I'm covering three zones like this. Got one up close, mid-range, and deep. When I say mid-range, I'm talking about from where I'm standing to the bar. These Assassin Amias, they're rated one to four ounce. They are top of the line set rig fishing rods for the panhandle. They really are. I'm getting two more of them. And those are gonna be my 11 footers. I'm gonna fish three Amiya Zeros, one to four. I'm gonna keep my two eight foot six daggers as my up close. And I got a shipment coming from South Africa. I got some 13 footers rated one to four. And I got some nine sixes. I'm excited about those nine sixes. I can't remember the rating on them, but they're a lighter action rod, maybe one to three. One to two. And I'm gonna create a new spread out here, guys. Nothing wrong with the spread I got now. It's time for a change. Guys, 30 minutes, few whiting. I've covered zones. 
I'm moving. I'm gonna find a close sandbar and get all the lines over the back end of it. And I'm gonna target out deep. This is a good tip for the tournament, guys. Don't get comfortable. You wanna be able to move fairly quickly because if you're set up in a dead zone, you can stick it out and wait, kind of cross your fingers. Maybe they'll come by or you can try to go find them. So I would definitely stay away from crowded beaches. All the very easy public accesses where like families and things like that are going to be. Get away from those areas, guys. Put in the effort and get down in these secluded beaches where you can find a lot of different looking structure, close sandbars, deep sandbars, cuts, like you want a variety. If you pick a spot and come out here and you got the whole garage with you, you're not gonna move. You're gonna stay there all weekend. Pack light, I'd fish three rods four at the most what was i saying about moving i can't remember pack light three four rods guys be able to pick up take off a lot easier got a lot of moving water here got a close bar a lot of deep moving water up front. I didn't even rig last night, so I got Fort Morgan setups with me. Everything's got big leaders on it. This is where the one ounce Frisky Fence Spudnik comes in handy. They got a lighter rod, so I don't want to overload it. But I got a lot of moving water up front. A little one ounce Frisky. We'll do the trick, and I've spilt all my shrimp in my basket. It's gonna be the last spot, and I gotta go. I got a super close bar here. A slight lob is gonna get it over the back of it. Oh yeah, that was a hit. Oh no, I lost him. I lost him. That was a hit for sure, all right. Oh my God. Complete madness. This is why you don't bring so many rides, guys. On tournament weekend, more crap like this you gotta deal with. I don't even know what's going on. All right, I think I got that one clear. Just like that. There he is. There he is. Get back. Durf. Another nice one. All right, I guess we're gonna eat whiting. I am not mad at. I'll get us a few more. All right, guys. Nothing exciting this morning. We do have a, a south wind push this afternoon, and I actually booked a guide while I was on the beach. So went ahead and got off the beach, get here so I can get some work done. Then we'll pack it back up, and I'll head back out this afternoon about 3.30. Oh. All right, guys. We're going to cap this one off. If you have not registered for the tournament, you can find all information at panhandlesalt.com. Go to the tournament tabs, click that, and then you'll see all our tournaments from the past. Just click on the, the first one, the fall 2024 tournament, and that will be all the information you need. If you're in the area and you're not fishing the tournament or you don't have a fish that you think is gonna be worthy enough to weigh in or whatever, still come out to the weigh in because there's gonna be a lot of sponsors there. They're gonna have a lot of gear. We'll have our charitable organizations out there talking about their programs. I'm sure Gary will have some of his good homebrew flowing. Oh. So you guys come check it out. We are two weeks out, guys. The Panhandle Salt Papano Showdown. I think this is like our seventh one. I'll see you guys on the next one.